What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the No Excuses Podcast, episode 12. Guys, in this podcast, I'm going to be talking about winning in all aspects of life. Guys, this is something huge. Most people have their life all backwards. They were always focused just on their career or their family or their bodies and their community, whatever. But they're missing. They're missing a lot. And life passes them by. And before you know it, they're losing. So first of all, guys, what do I mean by winning on all aspects of your life? Number one, winning in all aspects of your life means you're winning with your health. You got good health. Number two, you got good mental health. So you're not just physically fit, but your mind is solid and it's stable and you're not fucking depressed and you're not suicidal and you're not all fucked up. You don't have all anxiety and all the other bullshit. You could have a nice body and still be fucked up in the head. Number three, being financial stable, meaning that financially all your bills are paid. You're saving money every month. You have the freedom to go buy yourself a fucking cheeseburger, go on a vacation, do whatever it is the fuck that you feel like doing. Number four, having a spouse, okay, someone that loves you, supports you, cares for you, is there for you, pushes you, and propels you to be the best version of yourself. And let's not forget about that, guys, the intimacy part. And having someone who you're actually really into, right? Not just a fucking roommate. Next is children. Number five is children. Having good children. So you could be winning everywhere, but if your children are shitbags, okay, then guess what? You're not winning in life. The next part is community. That you're well off in your community. People respect you. You do good in the community. And you just have a good reputation as a man or a woman. Let's get started. Guys, so in order to win at every aspect of your life, you must start with the end in mind. Which means that you draw out a game plan. Okay, of where you want to go and where you want to be in your life. And then from there, you work backwards. So before you start any goals, before you go any direction, what you should be doing is starting with the end in mind, which means saying to yourself, well, where, where do I want to live? How much money do I want to make? What kind of person do I want to marry? What color hair do they have? What kind of personality do they have? What family do they come from? The job that I'm going to do, is it going to be labor? Is it going to be in front of a computer? Is it going to be helping people? Is it going to be with animals? Whatever it is, then go even to more detail. Am I going to be the owner? Am I going to be an employee? Am I going to work for a Fortune 500? Am I going to work for a small business? Okay, Then you're going to be like, okay, how do I want my body to look like? I want to look like a superhero. No, I want to look like a piece of shit. Whatever it is that you want in your life, put it all down. I want to have three kids, five kids, ten kids, no kids. Put it all down. I want to wake up happy. I want to wake up sad. I want to be able to motivate people. I want to be able to do it. whatever it is that I set my mind to do. I want to be well-known in my community. Once you create the end game, then you can start working on creating that life that you want. Well, when I decide to get in the car or hop on my motorcycle and do one of my road trips, I have a destination in mind. Okay, we are going to Nashville, Tennessee. All right, so in order to go to Nashville, Tennessee, I plug it into the GPS, I follow the GPS. And it tells me how to get to Nashville, Tennessee. Well, there's no difference if I want to start a business. There's no difference if I want to meet somebody that is compatible with me. There's no difference when I'm drawing out my life. 
So once you start with the end in mind, you're able to create a blueprint. Once you create that blueprint, you'll be able to start following through with it. And once you follow through with it, before you know it, your ideal life comes to comes alive, right? The reason people are now winning in every part of their lives is because they didn't start with the end in mind. They just got into a relationship. They didn't think it through. And then they realized, well, this is not the relationship or marriage I want to be in. This person is lame as fuck. This person's lazy. This person's fat. This person's ugly. This person's family sucks. Whatever it might be. But if you started with the end in mind, this is the type of person I want. And then does this person qualify? Do they meet that criteria? If the answer is yes, then you move forward with them. But let's just say you did meet that person. Right. And you have a good relationship and everything like that. Right. But then now. All you do is spend time with this person. And you're so infatuated, you're so dedicated, you're so driven towards this person that you start neglecting your friendships. You start neglecting your body. You start neglecting your work. You start neglecting all the other aspects of your life. So maybe even if this person is crazy about you just like how you're crazy about them, but then you neglect every other part of your life, you're fucking losing. You go on the wrong route. Or what about you get an opportunity to move out of state, to work on your career, and to grow tremendously, but by doing so, you would have to leave your family behind, you would always be traveling, and so on and so on which will end up you in a divorce, will end up with you fucking up your relationship with your children, will end up with a lot of voids that you will pay that bill for later. So you take that job, you're making four or $500,000 a year, you're killing a million dollars a year, it's truly irrelevant. You move your family to a beautiful house, you send your kids to private school, then you're never home. Your wife gets lonely. The intimacy starts dying down. You think you're doing your job because you're providing, you're giving everything you got, right? But she's lonely. She starts finding somewhere else to talk to, somebody else, somebody else to vibe with. She starts maybe having an affair. Your kids forget who you are. Are you still fucking winning because you're making a half a million dollars a year? You're not. You're fucking losing. You're doing great in your life. You have a great relationship with your wife. You're making a lot of money. You're spending time. But then your kids come out fucked up. Maybe you like you gave them too much. You spoiled them. Or you didn't discipline them correctly. You didn't give them what they really needed. And they turned out the wrong way. Whenever, guys, I've been training kids and adults for over... 20 years, whenever I see a fucked up kid, and right away I look at the parent. Where's the parents? Where's mom? Where's dad? Where have they been? What are they doing to help this child? Were they too nice? Did they spoiled them? Were they not around at all? Were they bad examples? I analyze all that, and usually that will give me the answer of why the kid is the way he is. Your kids are fucked up. You're not winning. You know what? You got good kids, you got a loving wife, and you're making money. But you can't stand looking at yourself in the mirror. Whenever you see yourself, you get grossed out. Because you totally let yourself go because you're so committed to your wife and kids and your job that now you just look like a fucking slob. You try to hide it with baggier clothes, fancier clothes, nice cologne. You know, but, but it's not helping you. Whenever you take your shirt off, you're embarrassed. You go to the beach, you don't want to take your shirt off. You know, like, you just, you, you feel like an embarrassment. Well, guess what? You're not fucking winning. You know what? You're killing it at work. You have a great marriage. You have awesome kids. You have a good body. But for some reason, 
You just can't be happy. Just not happy. In your mind, you're always unhappy. You're always sad. And we see this, guys. We see this with, with people who are famous, people, you know, they end up killing themselves and stuff. And it's just like, what? I'll never forget, man, like in 2008 when the economy crashed, there was an article about this billionaire who killed himself because he went from having several billion to like only having like one billion. And he just couldn't stand the fact that he was, that he lost all that money. And he ended up taking himself out. In his brain, he was a loser. In his brain, he didn't deserve to live anymore. Well, if you have those feelings in your head, you're fucking losing, no matter what you got in your life. You see this all the time when people commit suicide. Like, Why the fuck would he do that? Well, like his brain or her brain, they were losers. Guys, you must understand, in order to win in life, every aspect of your life, you have to be winning at. Your community, if you have a good wife, you make good money, your kids come out solid, you're healthy in your brain and in your body. But maybe you do like some shiesty shit. Maybe you like your character. Like maybe you're just a fucking asshole. Like maybe you're just a douchebag. Maybe you're just a greedy motherfucker. Maybe you're a selfish prick. I don't know. Whatever fucking stupid ass downfall you have. That anytime people kind of around, come around you, they cringe. Ah, like, oh, man, this fucking guy, or girls, horrible, right? Like I've been around people like that, man. Like as soon as they come around me, like I'm like, oh my gosh, get me the hell away from this human being. They're so fucking negative and toxic. I can't fucking look at them. Or maybe you're accepted in the community. You make good money. You have a good relationship. Your kids are cool. Everything is fine. Your body's fine. But then when no one's around, you're a fucking drug addict. Or you're addicted to porn. Or you're addicted to fucking alcohol. Whatever it is, you're not fucking winning. In order to fucking be a winner, in order for you to be considered a winner, a real winner in life, you have to win in every aspect of your life. And the way you can win in every aspect of your life is by starting with the end in mind. What type of life and person I want to be? I want to be, I want to make 100 grand a year. I want to make half a million a year. I want to make 50 grand a year. Whatever. Whatever number will satisfy you as a human being, you go fucking out there. And you find a way to make it. Whatever body you think you should have, you go out there, you put it down, and then you go out there and work towards it. Whatever spouse you think you should be with, you put that down and you work on getting that specific spouse. However many children, however you want them to turn out to be, you want them to be preppy, you want them to be badasses, you want them to be gamers, whatever it is that you want your kids to be. It's not my business because I have my own opinion of how it should be, but whatever, we're not there yet. You go, you work towards it, and you make it happen. Once you create that, you write down and create what you want, and you make that blueprint towards it, and then you work towards winning in every aspect of your life, that's when you become a winner. Now, guys, winning is a temporary place. You could be a winner today and start becoming a loser tomorrow. You could be a loser today and work your ass off and become a winner. You want to be a winner at every part of your life. It all requires watering. It requires attention. It requires discipline. It requires work ethic. It requires determination. It requires being resilient. It requires pivoting. It requires overcoming obstacles. 
It requires a strong mindset, a mental fortitude, a mind that can be creative. You see, your marriage might be good today, but tomorrow it might start going downhill. What are you doing to water it? What are you doing to work on it? What are you doing to be creative and make it better? You see, this morning I was driving, I was riding my motorcycle on A1A, and there are some old buildings, there are some new buildings. Well, the old buildings, they don't look that good no more. They look run down, especially compared to the new buildings. So if you're in the old building, you want to buy an apartment in the old building, it might be on the water, it might be 300 grand. But if you want a, the same size apartment on the, up, on the new building, right on the water, literally next door, it might be 600,000. The difference is one building updated and the other one stayed the same. Well, if you stay the same, your value will eventually start going down. And the more you stay the same and the less you invest in yourself and your personal development and into your business and into your marriage and into everything that is dear to you, the more it's going to go down. That's why somebody like me at 43 years old, I fucking outwork all the young motherfuckers. I barely meet any motherfucker ever that outworks me or has a better life than me because I'm relentless about keeping my life up to date. My workouts are due daily. My jiu-jitsu is due daily. My business, I work on it daily. You don't just take on your life and even if you made it what you wanted and just sit on it now. You can never sit on it, ever in your life. There's not a time in your life where you can be like, ah, I reached a destination. The destination is never there. You can reach a goal and you can sit on it, celebrate it, but tomorrow work is due again. After the weekend, work is due again. You can talk to any marriage, any couple. They can have a great month and then all of a sudden the following month it's disaster and they're thinking about divorce. You can see businesses, you know, Follow any of the Fortune 500s, you know, like you see their stock. They killed it this quarter, but next quarter they, they went down and fucking the stock tank. You see people like shredded and then, you know, who do competition and stuff. And then all of a sudden competition is over. They start eating like a pig. They blow up. They, they look like crap. You see people who have good children and all of a sudden the parents get busy and they let their kids do whatever they want. And the kids go to hell on a skateboard. Everything in your life, rat, is due daily. So once you figured out what you want, you figure the end goal, where you want to be in your life, then you make the plan and work on it. Once you achieve it, now it's maintenance. Now it's creativity. Now it's constantly working on keeping it together. Something that bothers me so much, man, when I talk to different people, when I coach people, is that so many people have a big ego about where they're winning in life. You know, if they're financially successful, they constantly, you know, like talk about their money and their business achievements and their, and their watches and their homes and their cars and their yachts and their airplanes or whatever it is that they have. You never hear them talk about their children. Children are fucked up. Keep that on the hush. Or they don't talk about their marriage when their marriage is garbage, when the husband is fucking the secretary and the wife is having an affair with the trainer. Right? Like, guys, this is happens every day. Why is it a guy who, who has a good relationship with his wife? That's all he focuses on, but he's a broke motherfucker and he's freaking barely surviving or someone who might have money and a good relationship, but their health fucking sucks and they try to brush it off 
Or maybe you have a lot of good things, but then you're a nerdy motherfucker. You know, maybe you have a lot of good things or you're a douchebag. I don't know, man. The bottom line is, do not hang on your wins if you want to have a good life. Never hang on your wins. You hang on your wins, you'll only suffer more and more. And I tell this to my jiu-jitsu students all the time. Like, one guy might be really good at takedowns. Another guy might be really good at playing guard. Another guy might be really good on top. Another guy might be good at sweeps. And I said, hey, open up your game, man. Stop doing the same move. Let people do this to you so you could do that. Let, you know, start working your takedowns since you only like pulling guard. The guy was only doing takedowns. Hey, start pulling guard. People refuse to go to where they're unfucking comfortable. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to try it. They know what needs to get done, but they'll do anything in their life to avoid it. As long as you're avoiding your downfalls, you cannot be a winner. Guys, you know, like, I know guys in the sports world who've dedicated their whole life to their sport. Basketball, jujitsu, football. And they kill it. And they're champions. But then everywhere else in their life, they're lacking. I don't call that a winner. To win, you must win everywhere. When you come home, your children greet you, kiss you, hug you, and are happy that you're home, or they can't stand you. Your children respect you. Are they disciplined? Or do they act like fucking gorillas running around, acting all crazy? Is your wife or husband into you? Do they make eye contact? Do they want to spend time with you? Or are they always trying to avoid you? And keep space. Is there intimacy? Is there a vibe? Is there fun? Is there good energy between you two? Is the sex life good? Or is it whack and lean? All fucking imperatives to be a winner. Is your business growing? Or is it dying? Is your clientele base getting bigger or smaller? Is your job that you have, is it dead-end job? Are you moving forward? Are you growing in the company? Or are you going downhill and getting ready to be replaced? Are you adding new skills and new, and new attributes to yourself that you can add to your business or your company? Or are you just staying still? Are you healthy? Do you like what you see in the mirror? Are you fit? Are you jacked? Are you lean? As a woman, are you sexy? Do you have the shape that you want to have? Or do you constantly make excuses? And say, oh, you know, I'm 40-something years old. That was when I was 25. Guys, when I hear men and women talk like that, I just want to run straight into the wall and bang my head. Because... Our society today, 2024, guys in their 40s, in their 50s, in their 60s, they look like fucking monsters. Jack, lean, ripped. Between working out, you got uh, testosterone replacement. You have all kinds of stuff, guys, that can help men. The for supplementation to help men keep up their physique and their looks and their energy levels and everything. Or are you going to make fucking excuses and be like, oh, well, you know, when I was at high school, I was the, you know, the, the captain of the football team. Bro, if you live in the past, you're a fucking loser. When I was back in my days, you know, um, I used to, you know, get all the whatever, all the women, blah, blah, blah. Do you get any now? Is your wife even into you? No? You're a fucking loser. Guys, and when you guys hear loser, you get offended. When I hear that I'm losing at anything, I get fucking 
motivated like a motherfucker. I get so inspired to know that I got work to do to get better. Someone beats me in chess. Someone beats me in jujitsu. Someone, my business starts falling off. My marriage starts going sideways. My kids are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. I get so hyped up, so motivated, and so inspired to work on the situation, not just to fix it, but to find the opportunity in it to thrive. When bad things happen, when things go sideways, I look within and then how can I find an opportunity to fucking thrive? To take it on to the next level. Guys, I refuse to let things be. Just let it be. People always tell you, ah, it is what it is. You know, my marriage, a ball and chain. You know, my job, ah, that's what it is. My boss is an asshole. You know, all my business, it's not like things used to be. Times have changed. All those comments are loser mentality. All those comments are, are people who are reactive. They react to their situation instead of being proactive and finding solutions and finding opportunities to take their situation and make it flourish. Guys, in my life, I have lost so much. From losing my parents, almost losing my marriage. Lost so much money in my life. Lost major jiu-jitsu tournaments. Lost all kinds of stuff. Tore my knees in football. Lost scholarships. Lost. I, I have so many losses I can't even explain to you. But in reality, I don't take them as losses. I take them as lessons. I take those lessons to propel me forward. I call it failing forward. Because I understand I need to win in every aspect of my life in order to be, in order to be considered a fucking winner. You see, in our society, it became okay to be a loser. It became okay to be average. It became okay not to compete. You should be competing. Because even if you're not, the competition is still there. Oh, man, I'm good with my business. You know, I'm not going to compete. Whoever wants to do business with me, they'll do it. You know, I'm not going to try to convince them otherwise. No problem. Your competition will outgrow you, will work on their product, and or their service and make it better and offer more value and your customers eventually will leave and go elsewhere. Oh, you know, my wife and I, we made vows to each other and it's till death do us part. Bullshit. It's a lie. It's a cliche. I'm sorry to tell you that. It's a fucking cliche. You don't do your part. You don't step up your game. You don't not just maintain, but improve who you are as a human being, work on your self-development and work on being the best person you can. Your spouse will start looking elsewhere. They might not act on it because they might be cowardice themselves, right? Where they're in their comfort zone. So, ah, you know, I can't stand him or I can't stand her, but I'll just stay because I'm afraid of what's out there or I'll just stay because I don't want to create more waves, more than they already are, but they won't do anything to make it better. The biggest fucking cowarding shit that I've ever seen in my life. You do not compete. Someone is out there looking to take your spot. They're looking to take your spot. They're looking to take your spouse. They're looking to take your job. They're looking to take everything they can from you. This is how society works. So if you don't work on yourself, you don't work on your marriage, you don't work on your business, you don't work on your children, someone else will. You ain't influencing your children the right way, 
Someone is going to influence them the wrong way. You ain't nurturing your marriage and making it grow and making it prosper. It will go the other way. And when it, you guys break up or shit goes sideways, there'll be somebody else who will try to nurture and make it prosper and so on and so on. Guys, life, this is how it works. Life is beautiful, but at the same time, cut through. Life doesn't fuck around. You refuse to take care of your health. You refuse to work out. You refuse to eat healthy. You refuse to do what, all the things that you're supposed to be doing to take care of yourself, to be, be the best version of yourself. No problem. Watch your health. Watch your mindset. Watch everything go down the hill. People even think like, oh, well, I work out, I go to work, da 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 But you know, what about nurturing your mind? When is the last time that you were fucking grateful? I've talked about this before, guys. When I wake up, I put my feet on the floor, I look up, I say, thank you, God, man. Thank you for another day. I look at my hands. I'll, I'll bat my eyelashes. I'll touch my face. Like, Eve, you're alive. How lucky you are, Eve, to be alive. To have hands, to have feet, to have toes, to have ears, to have nose, to have eyes. I can smell, I can breathe, I can hear, I can feel. I'm winning every fucking way I could fucking think of. I'm going to be ungrateful. I'm going to be depressed. I'm going to be depressed because whatever. What kind of fucking pussy loser shit is that? You see, you must understand. Motherfuckers who are depressed. In my opinion, they're unfucking grateful. What are you depressed about? Do you think you're the only one, only fucking human in this world that's going through what you're going through? Do you honestly think that? There's other people who are going through not just what you're going through, but 10 times worse than what you've gone through. And decide to wake up with a fucking smile. And decide to do something about it and make their life what they want. It's up to you, man. It's up to you. I'm not saying what's happening to you is not real. It might be 100% real. But where's your mindset? Pity me? How could this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? I can't believe this happened to me. Or, man, fuck, man, that was hard. I got some lessons to learn from this. I'm going to make sure I'm better off next time. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to work smarter. I'm not going to put all my eggs in one basket. I'm going to take care of my health. I'm going to treat this person differently. I'm going to nurture my marriage. I'm going to nurture my body. I'm going to nurture my business. You see, because when you let your mind go, when you think that the world is turning against you, it's just your mind is fucked up. The way you view it, the way you perceive it is fucked up. I choose every day to look at positive. I choose every day to wake up with a smile. I choose every day. To take everything I can out of this world in a positive way and not negative way. I refuse to watch the news. I refuse to listen to drama. I refuse to fucking go back and forth with people. Guys, I don't do any of that. Why? Because I want to protect my mind. I want to protect my soul. When someone's toxic and they're no good and I see that like I can't help them. I got to let them go. I don't even try to save them. There's no saving them. I just let them go. I let them go on their way so I can save myself. You see, I look at myself as like a lifeguard, guys. I try to save so many fucking people. And I try to help so many people. That's like my true purpose, I believe, guys, in life is to help lift up and guide as many people as I can. Men and women, children, everybody. But the lifeguard's duty is that if you're sinking, you got to swim up to you. 
and throw you and throw and throw you the the float. Okay, you're not supposed to hang on them. He's gonna throw you the float. If he throws you the float, okay, and you grab him because you're freaking out. He has to punch you in the fucking face and swim away. You cannot grab the lifeguard and fucking so both of you um drown and sink. This is what I mean about protecting my mindset. I will help you. I will be around you. I will do everything I can. But you must help yourself. I'll provide you the tools. I'll provide you the mindset. I'll provide you the guidance. But if you're trying to bring me down with your drama, I'm going to slowly, slowly cut you off to eventually you and I are done. If you have bad habits, I'm not hanging around you. You do drugs. You're a fucking alcoholic. You know, you're a cheater. Anything that's fucked up, I, I cut it off. You're a shy star. I cut it off. I cut it off. If our values don't align, I cut it off. I'm not going to be a dick to you, but I just cut it off because you're not good for me. You're not good for my mind. And then I, I, know, I know what my end goal is, and my end goal is to win in every aspect of my life. But I know if I can have a good marriage, good body, make money, my kids are good. But then I come and I deal with you and you literally make me toxic and make me sad and make me angry. I'm not winning anymore. I'm not fucking winning. I was talking to one of my uh, no excuses all in clients and one of my I have a few questionnaires in there, and one of the questions is, do you wake up happy, and do you go to bed easy? And he said, no. We started talking about it, and he said, Yaniv, is it a front that you wake up happy every day? Because, you know, I follow you on social media, and whenever I see you, you just always look happy, you always look enthusiastic. And I said, you think I'm lying? He goes, no, I just don't understand how you could wake up happy every fucking day. And I said, motherfucker, I design my life. I design my life how I want it. And whenever things don't go my way, I fucking edit. I cut, I copy, I paste, I maneuver, I pivot. I live the life that I want to live. See, if you live the life that you want to live, you're going to wake up happy. You're going to be enthusiastic. You're going to have fucking energy to tackle the day. But if you live a life that you don't want to live, that you're not happy with, that you're not thrilled to wake up to, ah, oh, man, I got to see her again, your wife. I got to see him again, your husband. Ah, oh, I got to deal with my kids. They're a fucking nightmare. Your kids. Ah, oh, my boss sucks. Your boss. Ah, oh, man, business is hard. Business. Man, I can't stand looking at myself because I'm disgusting. I'm a slob. I have no self-control. Whatever it is. If you can't keep it real with yourself, how you got to keep it real with anybody else? Of course you're not going to wake up happy. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I knew exactly what a type of woman I was looking for. And when I met her, I said to her, hey, I'm not looking for a woman. Like my wife, guys, she was a career woman. She used to wear a business suit. She's a college graduate with a finance degree. She's a very smart woman. But I explained to her, listen, it's all good. But if you want me to be your husband one day, I am looking for a stay-at-home wife. I am looking for a woman that will bring me a lot of children. I am looking for a woman that will cook, clean, and nurture. I'm looking for a woman that will let me lead. And I'm looking for a woman that would like to be intimate with me on a regular basis. And last but not least, I'm looking for a woman that I can have fun with. Will you fulfill this job description? Yes. Or no? If the answer is yes, 
then we can go into a contract, into a deal, into a marriage, where I will do all the duties I promise you, and you will do all the duties you promised me. I did not get into a marriage where it's like, ah, you know, she doesn't want to have kids, and, you know, maybe I'll convince her, and then go into the marriage, that hey, let's have kids. Like, no, I'm not interested. I told you I'm a career woman. But now you're already married two, three, four, five years. And now, now you caught between a rock and a hard place. You don't know what to do. You get a divorce, you stay, you this, you that. Well, if you were fucking smart and you started with the end in mind, you would have never got into it in the first place because the person told you, hey, I am not looking to have a family. Guys, every fucking part of your life falls on you. Sometimes I'll hear people, guys, like, and by the way, like, you, you hear me talk about people being fat. It's not like, I don't give a fuck if you're fat. Like, you're fat. Like, that's your fucking life. Like, I don't not like you because you're fat. I have plenty of people that I know that I'm cool with and I'm close with that are fucking fat. And they know they're fat. It's just, it is what it is. But what I want to say is, anybody who's fucking fat out there, who has the balls to say, it's my genetics. It's in my DNA. My parents were fat. My grandparents were fat. I want to tell you that you're a fucking idiot. Let me explain to you why. I want you to fly to fucking Africa, okay, or Ethiopia, and go there and tell me if you see any motherfucking, any motherfucker who's fat. You know why they're not fat? Because they have no fucking food. They have no food. You go to third world countries, you barely see motherfuckers who are fat. Why? Because they got no food. If you're not eating, you will not be fat. Period. No matter what your genetics is, no matter what your DNA says, just a matter of fact. No matter how fucking fat you are, okay? God forbid you get a disease that takes your appetite away, you become skinny. That's why all the motherfuckers with really bad diseases all become fucking skinny and look like fucking skeletons because they don't have appetite to eat anymore. So shut the fuck up with your excuses on why you're fat and blaming it on your family and your parents. You're fat for one reason, one reason only. Not because you're thyroid, not because you're mom, not because you're grandfather. You're fat because of your fucking mouth. You don't stop fucking eating. Take it up on yourself. Fucking make a change. Start exercising. Start eating right. Jump on my fucking no excuses program. So you cut out all your bullshit. Create your plan. Go from there. It will not be easy, but it will be worth it. And then all of a sudden, when you lose all the weight, you get the body that you want, and you get off all the fucking medications, you realize, wow, this is a different type of life. This is the life I want to live. I feel great. I look great. I, I can look at myself in the mirror without feeling like shit. You know, the other day, you know, I was, I was at the store and I was buying clothes for my son for his eighth grade dance. And we were passing by like the big and tall and I see like, see sizes, double X, triple X, quadruple X, five times X, six times X. And, and I'm not talking about the motherfuckers, you know, a guy who's fucking six foot seven, you know, and naturally... He's 240 pounds, 250 pounds. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the people who are fucking fat and let themselves go. At what point of your fat journey do you ask yourself, I think it's time for me to do something about this. Is it a 1X, 2X, 3X? At what point of your life do you say to yourself, man, I need to make a change? Or do you just keep going up the sizes? I don't care how much money you make. 
making million dollars a year. Okay. Your kids are good. You have a decent marriage. But you have a $5 body. You're losing. You're fucking losing. Write down every aspect that I told you. Body. Mind. Financial freedom. Marriage. Children. Community. Write those six subjects down. This is your homework. Write them down. First, write, what would you want from them? Okay, exactly what you want from them. Once you write exactly what you want and be honest and be sincere, be real. Then go and make a game plan. Then on the next page, write those six things again and write down what they are now. Is my body where I want it to be? Is my mental health where I want it to be? Is my health where I want it to be? Is my marriage where I want it to be? Is my financial situation where I want it to be? Are my kids where I want them to be? Or is, am I good in my community? And then start going to work. Go to work fucking daily. Go hard, make it happen, be consistent, be on point, don't make excuses. Be driven to beautify your life, to make your life something that's worth it, to make your life a life by design and not by default. Guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking and thank you for sharing. Please. Don't take anything I say with a bad heart. Because, guys, I promise you, my ultimate happiness comes when you, the viewer, my friends, my family, are fucking winning in life. Nothing makes me happier. When I see you guys overcome yourself, when I see you winning in every part of your life, that's when I win. And guys, don't expect to get to the pinnacle of where you want to be in one day. Start stacking small wins. Have gratitude for the small things. Start with the little things with your spouse. Start with changing your personal habits. Start with your workouts. Start with your eating right. Start with showing up on time. Start with having a good character. Start with all those little things will all turn to big things and beautiful things and then at the end of the day having a meaningful life and that when we have to put our head down to sleep we know we can go to sleep with a smile because our life is what we want and we didn't just end up here we put ourselves where we wanted to be hey guys thank you again Wish you guys the best. Guys, don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Have a kick-ass day. Usa.